Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to calculate the rate of an enzyme-controlled reaction by drawing a tangent. You should then be able to explain why the rate changes as the reaction proceeds. Now I should point out that many students find this topic a bit challenging at first, but stick with it and you will get it. As we've seen before, in an enzyme-controlled reaction, a substrate molecule is converted into a product molecule. And remember that for this to happen, the substrate molecule must collide successfully with the active site of the enzyme. Now if we plot the amount of product formed at different times, we get a graph like this. As you can see, at the start the line is steep. This means that a large amount of product is produced in a short time, so the rate of reaction is rapid initially. However, as the reaction continues, the line becomes less steep. Although we're still making product, the amount of product being formed in a given time is less than at the start. This tells us that at this point the rate of the reaction has decreased. In other words, the reaction is slowing down. Finally, at the end, the line is horizontal. This means that no more product is being made, so the reaction stopped. Now, instead of measuring the amount of product being formed, we can measure the amount of substrate remaining. In that case, we get a graph like this. Again, we see a rapid initial rate, followed by the reaction slowing down and finally stopping. Now we can measure the rate of the reaction at any point by drawing a tangent to the curve. A tangent is a straight line which just touches our curve at the point we're interested in. I'm showing you the same graph again, but this time I've put numbers on the axes. I'm going to use a tangent to measure the rate of the reaction at 5 seconds. So here's my tangent line. Now we need to work out the gradient of the tangent. To do that, we make the tangent into a triangle like this. We then measure the length of the vertical side, which we'll call y. In this case, the vertical side runs from 10 mg of product to 27 mg of product. So this means that y has a value of 17 mg of product. Next, we measure the length of the horizontal side, which we'll call x. In this case, the horizontal side runs from 1.5 seconds to 8 seconds. This means that x has a value of 6.5 seconds. To calculate the gradient, in other words the rate, we divide y by x. This gives us a rate of 2.62 mg of product per second to three significant figures. Now students often wonder how long a tangent line should be. Ideally, a tangent line should be reasonably long as that makes it easier to read the numbers accurately. OK, now in the exam you could be asked to explain the shape of this graph. Now the key thing to remember is that the rate of an enzyme controlled reaction depends on the frequency of successful collisions between the substrate molecules and the active site. And the word frequency means the number of collisions per second. At the start we've got a large amount of substrate molecules. This means that there's a high frequency of successful collisions between the substrate and the active site. This gives us a rapid initial rate of reaction. As the reaction takes place, some of the substrate is converted to product. This means that the amount of substrate molecules falls. So the chances of a substrate molecule colliding with the active site decreases, and this makes the reaction slow down. Finally, at a certain point, all of the substrate molecules have been converted to product, and there are no more substrate molecules left to collide with the active site. And at this point, the reaction stops. In the next video, we'll start looking at the factors that affect the rate of enzyme-controlled reactions.